So please take the time to fill it in. It will, it will not take more than two minutes. And now I would like to give the floor to the UNICO president, Luciano Sazo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vicky. Good morning to everyone. My name is Luciano Sazo. I'm the president of UNICA. Uh, just a couple of words about UNICA for maybe the participants uh, who do not know our work network well. Uh, UNICA is an association of universities based in Brussels. At the moment, we have 55 universities in 38 different capital cities. So it's a very active uh, network on different aspects of uh, you know, strategic activities of universities. And of course, uh, this topic today is very important, very close to our heart. Uh, we have been engaged uh, in other activities on this topic uh, before. Uh, UNICA is a member of Solace at Risk. Uh, we participated uh, to the, um, as a partner uh, to the project Academic Refuge uh, coordinated by the University of Oslo. And uh, I want to thank Marie Tegner, who is a speaker today, also for uh, organizing this uh, webinar together with us. Uh, and uh, the webinar was promoted by the University College Dublin. And I want to thank very much uh, Joe Carty, uh, the Dean of Science of University College Dublin for uh, you know, giving us this suggestion. I think it was really important not to neglect this topic in this difficult period of COVID. We have the impression that you know, uh, in the news, we only see news about COVID, but the problem of refugees and migrants is still there. Uh, it was not uh, for solved at all recently. Uh, there are in the world, we know about 70 million forcibly displaced uh, people and the uh, European Union in the last few years did not do much about it, unfortunately, we have to say, uh, because the numbers of uh, people reaching us in Europe is really very low compared to this uh, you know, huge number of people in need. Uh, and of course, uh, I mean, we have to thank all the universities, all the other organizations, um, you know, which are engaged, we try their best, but you no, know, we have to say that in terms of numbers uh, as a whole, uh, I think we should do more, we should be more uh, generous. Uh, also because uh, migration is uh, in the DNA of the European Union. Uh, and in the General Assembly a few days ago, um, I made a presentation just re reminding us that uh, in the 50s, when the European economic community was created, you know, the issue of migrations was very important because there were migrants going from Southern Europe to Northern Europe. There were agreements, you know, to try to have, you know, exchanges of, of people at that time. So I have to say that uh, this is a topic uh, very important for us. And especially for, for me as Italian, I mean, I, I have to remember that Italians have, have, have been emigrating everywhere in very hard conditions in the past. And nowadays, again, we have to be more generous with the people who try to reach us. Um, so we'll not uh, continue for, for very long. I also want to thank very much uh, Joao Mario Grillo. Uh, he's the chair of the UNICA and the City Working Group. He's a professor at Nova University in Lisbon. And uh, this webinar is part of the activities of the UNICA and the City Working Group. I encourage the participants to go on the website of UNICA to look and the, all the other activities of this working group and in general of UNICA, we try again to do events, uh, projects, publications on, on different topics. But again, this topic is, is very important and, and we will continue uh, the discussion on this in the future. And again, I encourage all the participants to stay in touch, you know, maybe for other possible activities. I also want to thank very much the UNICA office, especially. Uh, Vicky Tsonka and uh, Laura Colò because they really worked very hard for all the organization, uh, which was uh, great as, as, uh, as always. So uh, without further ado, um, I would like again to wish you a very pleasant and interesting webinar. And I give the floor to João Mario Grillo, the chair of the UNIC and the City Working Group. Thank you so much, Luciano, and good morning to everybody. And thank you also for being present at this webinar which is the second webinar that is organized by the, the universities and city group. The first one was about uh, citizen science. And this one for me is with the same arguments as Lucien, because the Portuguese were recognized that the displacement uh, situation from uh, 
the beginning of the century, the 20th century. And then, so this is a very important topic. I am very happy that uh, in times of COVID, uh, the uh, UNICA has the, the, you know, the disposition to think about other topics that uh, um, are part of uh, the actuality of the university. But we, as Luciana said, are in the shadow of the, 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 the newsroom of every newspaper. So we have the impression that migration has ended uh, one year ago. Uh, but we know that uh, uh, everybody is moving uh, all around without uh, proper protection. And in a community which is much more larger than we imagine, and with much more problems that the university must address and must help to solve. So thank you very much. And especially uh, thank you to Jorcarty, uh, to whom I give the floor. But I don't see him. Uh, ah, OK. Good morning, Joe. Thank you so much for organizing this webinar. As I, I, I said, for me, it's a very important sub subject, and I think for everybody who is here now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I won't speak too long because we want to get on to our very interesting speakers. Um, as you have both said, this is a huge problem and probably an overwhelming problem, and it needs governments, it needs the EU, it needs to be attacked internationally. And sometimes the question, what can universities do? and universities themselves are complex organizations and it's hard for any individual to get a university to act. So I would ask people to think about the opportunity for individuals to do something in your own school, in your own department in a university. You might, you might invite an academic speaker in or FG academic speaker in to speak at one of your seminars. You might invite a student in. You might be able to take one student on an undergraduate course or one student on a postgraduate course and gradually build up. So don't be afraid to start small, to take an opportunity to help one individual and then see can you grow. It's hard for any individual to get a university to start a brand new program to attract lots of students um, or lots of academics, but we all may be able to do one thing to help one person. And if we do so, we can make a difference. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker and I'm gonna allow each speaker to introduce themselves. So I'm just gonna introduce them by name and where they're from and then each speaker can spend a minute or two introducing themselves. So our first speaker is Amal Alzman from the University of Vrij in Brussels. So Amal, we'll pass the floor over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So actually, uh, at the first time I speak about um, myself in public and in media since uh, I left my country. So actually, I'm very involved with this uh, webinar because I am from country. Uh, more than half of the population were forced display, displaced, uh, internal in the, our neighbor and in Europe. So actually, uh, uh, I was in Europe in 2015 after a um, risky journey, as you everybody here in, uh, in the media. And I arrived Belgium, and since I arrived, it was always what in my mind was to find uh, my future, how I could continue because I am computer engineer. I was very hard worker in my country. I was teacher assistant in university. I have more than one job. So for me to start from scratch with a new country, with a new culture, everything is new for me, it was not easy. So um, when I were in the camp, uh, I asked for job permission and start to look for a job until I found in the internet that um, my university, my VUB, uh, uh, that they offer, uh, uh, they want to hire 10 uh, refugees with a good background, they are, for sure have this talent and skill to hire them in uh, the UB. So I applied for this job. It was not easy for me because I have a small uh, phone. I should write the cover letter. I should uh, adjust my CV. I just, and the internet was not so nice because it was a military camp. I go to uh, during the night where it is nice internet 
and the supervisor to catch internet to do it was very difficult. And after three interviews, I was elected and to start job in a VUB. And honestly, that was uh, the the one of the best uh, what happened to me because it changed my life. Because I back to be normal person because I'm very independent uh, uh, person. Uh, uh, I never I never ask my parent for money to ask government to to earn myself that's for me it's it's impossible so when i found this job it was for me like really uh the best news ever heard and um, uh, after three interview uh, and it was uh, it was okay i was elected and i started my job in uh, vup like data manager and the same time i applied for master uh, I have a master in my country uh, in web science from virtual, Serum Virtual University, but I would like to improve and refresh my knowledge. Actually, I applied, I, I would like to thank VUB really, because I saw uh, how they manage this program. They have a special program uh, for refugee to apply for, to continue their studies as a bachelor or master or doctora even so they help me a lot like i have a lot of exemption uh, from my old master uh, so i have like 30 credits and uh, i need like certification for english like ielts or something like that so they say okay since you studied in english so they really facilitate my way to apply for this master so it's I am I'm really very thankful and grateful for for what's uh, for the strategy in a VUB because really I see like uh, it's not just words when they say we are against discrimination we like diversity we like everything but unfortunately I didn't continue in this master because I I had to choose between uh, uh, to work and uh, have evening in uh, language classes because here in Belgium we have two languages in French and Dutch and I need the two plus my English it's not perfect as well so I choose between my work with the evening language at the master and the same time I am 40 year old so it's not like you are 20 so you choose but for me it was very um, good um, adventure to apply and to see uh, how it works in 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 Europe and in university. So really, it's um, it's it's a good time to thank um, uh, Belgium, to thank VUB, to thank uh, everybody helped me to restart my 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 life again. So I was uh, unemployment for seven months, just like that. But for sure, if I am not hard worker, if I am not skilled. So I got the help. I was ready to get the opportunity. So uh, I am now still working with a, a permanent contract. So I think it was good for both of us. Like now I am taxpayer and I'm participate to build the society. At the same time, they helped me to, to, to have a quick start. So it's really when you help the people uh, to to build their future, to 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 recover from uh, the impact of the war. It's really something very nice. For me, it's not something even ethics. Uh, the ethics also is uh, like a business, really like a business. So you are taking care of these book people. You are to give them the opportunity and facilitate the way in front of them to, 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 to continue. And at the same time, you, you will get benefit at the least because also they will participate. So really uh, when I see uh, my country, it's a little bit, you know, the last 10 years, it was uh, the first uh, uh, news always about Syria everywhere, but also I know that there is a lot of immigrant and countries has problem and the people uh, are forced to be to leave their country. Nobody like to leave 
his life huh? if he's not. So it will be very nice when we help these people for 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 for, for ourselves and for for the rest. So um, actually, we, when we see now when it, with Corona, so nobody is isolated. In, it's our in our planet. We are all involved with with what happened in this planet. So what if as example when we have five million i think child in the camps syrian they are not they they are not going to school no future not no education i think in the future everybody in this planet will be affected we will have this impact because these people in this situation i don't know what they will change they to be i hope not but to be criminal to, for, to, to start something like the terrorist, terrorist or something. So I think it will be very our responsibility from everybody. Uh, everyone should commitment to help these people as a university or uh, uh, in another way. As example, also we can now, it's we are going to work, um, uh, edu distance education, so we can, if you can build infrastructure in the camps in Jordania and Turkey, even in Greece, and we start to educate these people that in uh, for languages, for an, in IT, for anything that that will be good. We are helping them, and also could Europe and all the countries get benefit from this human resource, actually. That's what I want to say. And thank you again for you. Thank you for VUB, my, my, my home, actually, that uh, give me uh, the chance to build my life quicker. And thank you for everybody. I finish. Uh, I don't, I don't Thank you very much, Amal. That was a wonderful testimony um, and a great start to our session. Our next speaker is Mikhail.